Okay, this is going to be recorded, and one thing I say at the beginning of all these webinars is if you're not familiar with options and or this strategy, I mean, this strategy is relatively easy to understand, and you may have read something online about how to build this strategy, but I'm going to go through my rules as the ways to increase your probabilities of success with this one. Some of them just say, pick these strikes and you're good to go. Well, that's not necessarily true because as many of you that I, I see are return, We've gone through the whole butterfly segment so far, and now we're going to break that wing to increase our probabilities of success, especially from the long butterfly. The, this is kind of set up like a long butterfly, but when we break that wing, we can increase our probabilities of success because, as I mentioned, with the long butterfly, just the regular long butterfly, your probabilities of success with that strategy are very, very low. So this is a way to increase the probabilities with that one but keep in mind when we've increased our probabilities of success we are also incurring more risk so with this strategy you will be incurring a little bit more risk directionally to the upside but we are going to negate and even profit uh, in many instances if the market comes back off so uh, that's the difference there. Anyway, let me get through a couple of things before we get really started. My name's Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman, as Rick threw out there already, from CNBC, Fox Business, or the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. I started trading in college with some money I had earned at a discount brokerage house. I uh, started buying stocks, actually, trying to build a portfolio, and then actually started trading uh, options around that. Um, and in that time, I've traded, or the, actually, after I graduated from college with a finance degree, switched it over from psychology to finance, I moved to Chicago to work at the Board of Trade. Started out as a runner and then moved into the pits and started trading from there on out. Uh, but in that entire time, I've traded everything from stocks, financial futures, commodity futures, and currencies, and options on all of these products in all market conditions. Uh, Got to go over this disclaimer really quick. Any opinions, news, research, and analysis, or other information contained here or material provided by ProTrader Strategies, associate companies, or employees is to be provided as general commentary and does not constitute investment advice or solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies that we talk about. I have to say that, you guys, because I don't know your risk parameters, I don't know what's in your portfolios, and it would not be a fiduciary responsibility if I just told you guys to go out there blindly and do these. Uh, even though this is going to be like an IRA appropriate kind of thing, make sure that the risk parameters with this strategy meet your risk parameters or that you're willing to take on some of these risks. Uh, the bottom line is do your own homework and remember past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so then on to, I'm on Twitter. You can follow me at Wolfman's blog. You can follow uh, ProTrader Strategies at ProTraderStrat on Twitter uh, for deals on different webinars that we're doing with ProTrader Strategies and uh, some market knowledge they drop every now and then. And for me, uh, you can get some economic stuff if you're watching during earnings. I usually throw out my earnings trades out there and um, general snark, I guess, if you will. So this particular one is going to be on the broken wing call butterfly, which uh, in a sense, we're going to increase our risk to the upside while completely negating our risk to the downside. So we're going to I'm going to show you how uh, to build this out to and how how it will increase your probabilities of success with this one. And this isn't one that I use a lot, but at the end of the day, I throw it in, you know, a, a handful of times each quarter, if you will, uh, when I'm really not sure of market direction or I think the market's going to kind of settle down a little bit. So this is a good one, especially for high implied volatility. Uh, and we'll talk about that. Uh, I saw it called a skip strike. Do you guys use that term? 
Yes, I mean, as a matter of fact, great question. It's also known as a skip strike or a wounded wing butterfly. We used to always just call it the broken wing butterfly on the floor. So, but those are other names it is known as. Uh, and the reason why it's called a skip strike butterfly in a sense is because there's an embedded uh, short call spread in there. And that by selling that short call spread is what finances this butterfly and makes it so that there's no risk to the downside. But in that, with a short call spread embedded in there, that's where we're increasing our risk. And I'll go through that. It could be a little confusing right now, but I, hopefully by the end of this, we'll have explained all of that. Now, with this broken wing butterfly, we are looking for a market neutral type scenario. Um, the way I usually set it up, I give my room. I give myself room to the upside a little bit, but I don't want it to have a big rally. Uh, you know, a few ticks to the upside would be the sweet spot. And if it goes down, then I'm all the more happier with this particular strategy. So, but at the end of the day, it is market neutral, but it is negative delta. So keep that in mind. We are biased to the downside in a sense with this strategy. So, um, it's market neutral, slightly bearish, but it's also slightly bullish the way I set it up. So we just don't want a big, huge move to the upside, care less how far down it goes. Um, so we need to have this market assumption. We don't think this is something like maybe, I don't know if everybody loves Apple and thinks it's always going to go up. We wouldn't want that for this strategy. We don't want it to necessarily go through the roof. Maybe something that's uh, just had bad earnings or um, something along those lines, and we are biased to the downside, but maybe all of the bad news is out of the way and it's going to kind of settle down. We also want to have high implied volatility percent. I'll go through that. Something greater than 50. The reason why we want it greater than 50 because it allows us to increase our break-evens by having uh, wider wings and if we have wider wings can create this strategy, then we've increased our probability of profit. And we always want to collect a credit. Worst case scenario, do it for zero. Then you've limited yourself to the downside. But I always try and build this out to where uh, I am receiving some type of credit. So if the market does go down, uh, it's still a winner. Because I look at it, if I'm taking that increased risk to the upside, I at least want to receive something for taking that risk. All right, so the setup, basically we're going to sell uh, or sell two out-of-the-money calls, but we're buying, this says an in-the-money call, I lean towards buying the one that is right there at the money, which is different from the... Uh, the regular butterfly where I usually kind of try and straddle around where the underlying is trading, want it to settle down right there. This one, I'm picking the at the money call to buy because I want to give myself room to the upside uh, with this strategy. And if it goes down, then I am uh, locking in that credit that I received. And then selling two out of the money calls and then skipping that strike to get to the call that I'm buying. Now, if you remember when we did the broken wing or the regular butterfly, which would have been the long call butterfly, we sold two at the monies, bought it in the money, and then they were equal distance apart. What we're kind of doing is selling that strike. This is where the call spread comes in. The call that we bought that was equal distance away, we're kind of selling out of that and buying the next call further out. So that's where that embedded call spread is in there. And I'll show that again when we pull up the platform, how that works out. But that's where that skip strike is because it's a synthetic embedded short call spread, which finances the whole thing. Did I make sense on that or did I, did I just lose everybody? Everybody's head just blow up like, uh, like a rocket. All right. All right. So, the difference between the traditional butterfly, another difference between the traditional butterfly and a broken wing butterfly. With the traditional, we have to nail, nail that number in order to really kind of be successful. Uh, that is 
a very tough nut to crack. But having said that, we have a lower margin requirement for doing that traditional butterfly. Uh, because we're increasing our risk to the upside, they're going to ask for more margin requirement. So with the broken wing butterfly, we're transferring risk to the upside in order to increase or have a higher profit potential. Now, anytime you increase your risk, you're increasing your probabilities of profit. So that's, uh, and especially anytime you're taking a credit for any type of spread, you have a higher probability of profit with that. But transferring risk, higher probability of profit means we have a uh, bit of a higher risk or higher max loss. But it protects us from the downward move. You know, with a traditional butterfly, we got to nail that number. It can go up, we lose money. It can go down, we lose money. With this one, if it goes down, we are completely protected to the downside. Now, uh, picking the right strike or picking the right underlying, this goes with all of my strategies, guys. Find this, the markets that have the tightest bid ask, the ones that everybody's trading. All right. This has multiple legs. And with multiple legs, the wider those bid asks are, the more we have to give up to get in, the more we have to give up to get out. So, you know, a stock that's $100 or less, we would ultimately want that to be a bid ask of less than 10 cents. And if it's a stock that's bigger than that, you know, a $300 stock or uh, something along those lines like Ulta, uh, we want it to be, Ulta's trading 270 or something like that. So we would want it to be about 27 cents wide. Um, so basically the idea is take the price of that stock, if it's above $100 for the most part, and move the decimal three ticks to the left, and that's how much you should be seeing the bid ask uh, differential. $300 stock would be 30 cents in that regard. Uh, something like Priceline, you know, it'd be a uh, $1,000 stock, let's just say it sh should be inside of a dollar wide. All right, picking the right strikes with this one. The ultimate thing I want to take away from this is obviously we need to pick the right strikes in order to get a credit. I don't want to do this and break the wing and still pay a debit for it. That doesn't make sense to me because I haven't completely limited my risk to the downside. So if you are paying a debit for this broken wing butterfly, not only are you increasing your risk to the upside, you still have risk to the downside. And that kind of defeats the purpose of the broken wing butterfly for me because you have slightly decreased your risk to the downside because you know what, uh, you, you know, you're not losing as much. But at the end of the day, you still ultimately need to nail the number. So make sure you're at least collecting a credit. Worst, you know, I mean, you can go for zero. Uh, I like to collect a credit. I like to come away with something if I'm uh, taking this risk on. But never pay a debit. That's what I want you to take away from here. Never pay a debit for this spread. All right. Picking the right duration. Again, with the long butterfly, remember I said we want to go less days to expiration. We don't want to pick a 365 day broken wing butterfly or a, you know, a hundred day broken wing butterfly, let alone a long butterfly because our probabilities of success with the regular butterfly are not very good on nailing that number. With this one, over the course of that long year, you know, we've been in a long bull market. Yeah, it could correct and go down, but 365 days is just way too long for something like this. I like to shoot for inside of that 35 days because this strategy, we're trying to take advantage or exploit theta decay, which is this part of the slope. So inside 35 days is the best case scenario for this strategy and high implied volatility because if you come into this strategy with high implied volatility, the uh, premiums are pumped up. And when premiums are pumped up, it has a tendency to hold off theta decay from happening. And when that volatility comes out, that theta decay comes out as well much quicker. It's kind of like a balloon. You blow up a 
uh, volatility is blowing up a balloon, it infl inflates it. You can see that the arc would not be as drastic. And then when you let go of uh, the balloon, that's volatility coming out and it just squishes down. So that's what we're kind of looking for for this would be the perfect scenario. And I mentioned on this with picking the right environment, we want that high implied volatility. <coughs> Excuse me. Above 50%, right? All right. And knowing our exit strategy before entering this trade. So at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is take about 50% of what our max profit is here. Just like any type of credit spread that I'm looking for, uh, when I collect a credit, I'm trying to take about 50% of the max profit. Now with this strategy, we're going to collect a credit, but our max profit potential is much greater than that. I'll show you how to figure out what that max profit is here in a second. But at the end of the day, we want to take about 50% of that. Now another comparison with the traditional butterfly versus the broken wing butterfly. This is a, a BBBY or BBY. And with this trade, what we're looking at is the normal long call butterfly. As you can see, these are equal distance apart. I set it up just like I did for the webinar. You know, uh, we're three ticks down, three ticks up, and you're paying a debit of 61 cents. Um, that being said, uh, you can see right here that our buying power effect is the 61 cents, so that's our max loss on this one. And uh, that is going to change when we break that wing. As you can see, our max loss now becomes $284 by moving this 47 call to the 50 call, doubling that distance of the 41 to the 44, then we double that distance. That's the broken wing. Now you can set it up where this could be like the 49 uh, call as well. That's still considered a broken wing butterfly and you might do it for uh, a no credit kind of thing. And, and that's fine as well. I usually go for the double the width of this strike to this one. Uh, can you still place trade on an up day of the market or preferred on a down day. Um, you know, being a contrarian, I'd probably rather put this in on a big up day on something uh, because then the possibility is that it could come back down. Uh, so it's kind of the way you like to trade. Uh, and as a matter of fact, with this trade, I like to put it on, you know, where the, you know, in this case scenario, this XYZ stock would be trading right around 41 when I put this trade on and the 44s would be out of the money and way out of the money on those 50 calls. That's the way I like to set this up. Um, uh, but, you know, obviously uh, Best Buy is um, trading right around 44, but I wanted to make this kind of like um, a better example of just how you break that wing. All right, so like I mentioned, max profit, we're taking 50% of our max profit here. The way to figure out our max profit is you take that middle strike, which is the uh, strike that uh, in the previous example here was the 44 strike, the one we're short, and minus the 41 calls. So the 44 calls minus the 41 calls. And then uh, you add the credit back in. So as you can see, our max profit then becomes uh, $316. So, you know, it's, wait a second. Uh, did I do that? The um, middle strike minus the lower strike, right? Yeah, plus the credit, yeah. So it's middle strike minus the lower strike. It's 200 plus the credit should be, oh, because it's $3 wide. I'm sorry. I need to learn to add it. I was adding $2. So $3 wide, middle strike minus the lower strike. $3 wide plus the credit is $3.16. $3.16 times 100 because when we're doing options, 
it's multiplied by 100, so your max profit is $316. Now remember, I'm not trying to get this max profit. I'm trying to get about 50% of that. So about $255, let's call it, or $150, let's call it, $155, somewhere right around there is where I'm going to be looking to cover that. Uh, are you re recommending that we not have the same distance on the lower wing or and the upper wing? I'm, su I'm suggesting that the upper wing, there's a skip strike in there. So the, normally with a butterfly, we'd be doing the 47s, right? Because that's equal distance. So 41, three ticks to difference here, three ticks difference here. With this one, we're skipping that 47 strike and going three ticks higher than that. So I'm suggesting that you double the distance between this, these two strikes to this, these two strikes. If it was $1 wide, if it was the 43, 44, 45 regular butterfly, then you would skip to the 46. That embeds that short strike in there. That makes sense? I'm getting a few questions here. Uh, I have heard the term ninja butterfly. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what the ninja butterfly is on Rick. It could be, I don't know that we called it the broken wing on the floor. Um, can you set up a call and put broken wing butterfly for a credit, like an iron condor SP? Uh, we'll, I'll set up the, uh, call broken wing butterfly for this. I think, uh, uh, SPX has, or low uh, implied volatility, Robert. So we could try to do it, but um, it's going to have pretty low implied volatility. Uh, I lost the rationale of why to skip the strike. All right, so the reason why we're skipping that strike, and uh, I'll go over this in just a minute, but the reason why we're skipping that strike is because it decreases all of our risk to the downside. And if we have no risk to the downside, that increases our probability of success, right? If you have no risk to the downside, we have no, uh, you know, that's all success. So all of that, you only have risk to the upside. Now, one could say that the market always goes up, so you only have risk to the upside, but uh, that's not necessarily true, really, for probability's sake. And by selling that embedded call spread in there, it finances the entire butterfly. And I'll show you that here in a second. Just let me get through these real quick. And the max loss is that higher strike minus the skip strike minus the net credit received. So in this case, it's the higher strike minus the 44. So that's uh, $6 wide and minus the uh, credit received gives us our max loss of, um, where is the max loss? $284. So it's the, oh, I said skip strike. Sorry, I'm getting blown up with questions. It's the higher strike minus the skip strike. So the skip strike is the 47 here. So uh, it's the $3 minus the credit received gives us the $284. So minus the skip strike there. Below the short call. Can you explain that, David? Oh, with the uh, lower. So we get the max profit under the short call uh, win. Yes. Yeah, so you get, well, you actually get your max profit when the underlying is trading, you know, settle, would settle right there at the 44 strike. That would be your max profit. But as you can see from where this would have been initiated at 44, all of this is profit to the downside and you start decreasing profit to the upside and obviously this is where you start to uh, lose money. So um, all from here all the way down is profit potential. So that's where your probabilities are in being successful from basically the break even all the way down. From where we're trading so it can go slightly higher here which is that mildly bear bullish uh sentiment i was talking about but everything to the downside is profitable so that's how you have increased profit uh 
probability of profit. Whereas with the regular butterfly, see, uh, you got to kind of nail it right within this number, this area in order to get that profit. That likelihood isn't nearly as good as the likelihood of being profitable with this one, right? But given that, we've taken more risk to the upside. Does that make sense? So, um, so our, our max loss is the higher strike minus the skip strike. So in that case, it was the 50 minus the 47, and then my, which is $3 minus the 16 cents, which brings us to $280 is our max loss on this. All right, and then our break even, because we've collected a credit or we're getting it for zero credit, our break even to the downside doesn't matter. That's why I also don't want you to take a debit. And then the break even to the upside is the short strike plus the credit received, which is the um, I was doing this. Uh, so our break even to the upside is the skip strike is what I should have in there plus the credit received kind of gotten off of this a little bit. So this is the short skipped strike on there. So this is the short skipped strike. Should be just skipped. All right, so the skipped strike plus the credit received. Oh, because I wrote it out. It's basically the short skip. It's the skip strike plus the credit received. You could look at it as the width of the spreads also. So that's why I was. I always look at it. My skip strike plus the credit received is where it's at. But if you're doing it with the, uh, if you're doing it with uh, not not doubling that outside spread, then the break even would be the short strike plus the credit received plus the width of the long spread. Okay, so in that, you're going to come out with the same thing. Uh, but if you're going to come up with your break even on, say, that one for the example, I said the 41, 44, and I went to the 50. If you did the 49 where it's not really doubling that spread, then you would figure out the break even through the short strike plus the credit received plus the width of the long spreads. All right, let's get into this so I don't... Uh, <laughs> Confuse you too much with that. So uh, this is usually where I throw it out for you guys to give some example. Robert already threw out one, so we'll look at that one first. Uh, I don't want to trade without my financial, yeah, advisor. I'm your financial advisor at this point. Uh, why the width of the long spread? Uh, because the width of the long spread is you're gonna you're gonna gain money on that. So um, that's why, for instance, let's go back to this right here. So uh, so remember, the long spread is going to be this $3 wide long spread. Okay. So if the market goes up, we are going to make that $3. So in a sense, we're making that $3. We're losing this uh, six hundred dollars right so the difference there is the three hundred dollars we're losing here and but we collected a credit so we need to subtract that credit from the three hundred dollars we lost and that gives you the uh 286 that's the other reason why i go with it it's really just that skip strike plus the credit received uh increases your break even to the upside but if you if you're a different visual thinker than that, the idea is if the market goes up, right? I've lost that six hundred dollars, but I've gained the three hundred dollars on this long spread, right? Okay, good. Does that make sense to everybody else? That was a great question, David. I don't think I explained it well the first time, but that's the idea. 
you're gaining money on your long spread but losing money on your short uh, spread here and then you've collected a credit so you take that credit and add it back into your loss all right so let me pull up this again all right great questions today I love it all right so keeping me on my toes so we're going to go into the trade window first one I was asked about was SPX so let's look at uh, SPX now uh, with this being an ETF you know I said above an IV percent of 50 IV percent above 50 which is right over here on this side with ETFs anything uh, as an IV percent above 30 with ETFs or uh, a basket of products that's what we're looking for with this uh, particular strategy so ETFs above 30 works uh, any stocks needs to be above 50 and as you can see here we've got a 6% IV so just to give an example I want to just throw it up just to show you so um, let's just do some less so usually with this one I'm going to kind of go and do the strike that is uh, just outside um, out of the money in a sense so actually that would be you know you could do this one but I, I'm gonna go right here we're gonna go there buy that one probably for sorry I did that backwards um, I want to uh, buy that one so I want to buy this one sell two of these and then normally with a butterfly we would be buying this one so with that I'm going to show you on the uh, analyze tab what that looks like real quick All right so on the analyze tab for one with the low ID here you can see you don't have very much room and if we had higher IV for instance if IV um, where's my IV button uh, of oh, the adjustment so that's not gonna work with this um, with this one it's too big uh, so but with higher implied volatility because those ones at the money we would be collecting a lot more credit for them uh, because those premiums are pumped up we would be able to get our wings you know further away in a sense but in a, what we're doing is when I was saying that we're going to sell an embedded call spread in there if we were to sell these uh, 2330s right so that would get rid of this plus if I sell one of those and then I were to buy the next strike out which would be the uh, the four uh, the 35 so if I sold the 30s that would negate out that plus and bought the 35s that's the embedded strike in there that um, allows us to gain a credit for it so you guys see how that is a synthetic embedded short call spread I had to sell on the regular butterfly the regular long butterfly those 30 calls and then buy these 35 calls so that's where that embedded call spread comes from and then it goes to being a credit of a dollar sixty does that make sense you make screen bigger uh, by moving oh yeah I can do this you want me to do this stretch it out like that is that what you're saying does that help a little bit better uh, by I don't think I can make my screen bigger oh if I move this column left like this is that better okay okay um, so uh, let's go look at another does anybody else have any other stocks they wanted me to look at we could look at the rut also because that was thrown out there uh, let me delete this one 
Rut's a little bit better at 17, but I would really like it to be above 30 before I do this uh, strategy. And the rut's trading at 88. So, you know, to keep with that bullish sentiment in a sense, I'm going to be, and this is IRA appropriate because we're doing two defined risk strategies. Um, so we are going to want to uh, buy the one that's just out of the money. You could probably pick the 85s. Depends on how you like it. I'd rather be a little bit more bullish with this one. And then for this one, I'm going to skip out a little bit further to give myself a little bit more room. So then we want to sell two of those. Since I normally would do this one, I'm skipping and going twice as far out. So I'm going $20 to the, I went $10 there. So I want to go $20 to the upside. Okay, so we went ten dollars wide here, so I double it and go twenty one to the upside there, and that gets us a three dollar credit for that. Okay, so we can analyze this. I'm probably going to have to delete the other one, and uh, no risk to the downside because of that credit, and our risk to the upside is um, basically uh, fourteen uh, thirteen. To the upside or that's where our break-even is is the 14 13 to the upside yes Richard this is being recorded and one thing I say is for everybody watch this again because some of the nuances will be lost on you uh, one other thing I wanted to throw out to you guys that is uh, that I forgot to mention if you were in on the regular butterfly long butterfly webinar is one of the ways that you can show the probability of uh, your success with the regular butterfly is to take the debit that you paid. So in this case, we're paying a 70 cent debit, right? So you can take that 70 cent debit or $70, let's just say $70 debit and divide it by the width of these strikes, which is, you know, here, I'll just do it regular. Let's do the 70 cent debit divided by that $10 wide spread equals 0 0.07. That is a 7% probability of success with the long butterfly. Uh, yeah, John, uh, with this one, were you talking about the break even? I may have done to the upside. The break even is 14, 13, 10. So 14, 13 to the upside is a break even right there. Okay. And then our uh, max loss is going to be the $10, the $10 wide and the uh, minus the $20 wide. So we got $10, $10 minus the 13, so 700 and something dollars to the downside, Seven, $700 to the uh, upside is our max risk. So I don't know why I did that. I wanted to go to like, confirm the trade. So our max break even on the stock, 14, 13, 10. Max profit is uh, 13, 10. And then um, buying power effect is a little bit more expensive than the regular butterfly. And then um, our max loss on this is uh, 690. which is the $10 wide minus the credit. That makes sense. All right. So um, does anybody else have any other ones that we got NVIDIA? Okay. Everybody's blowing it up now. Okay. Um, so let's look at it. Uh, remember we want something that has 
I implied volatility. So let's look at NVIDIA. I think they just had earnings. Oops. So that's another thing. Uh, one thing to set this up. Okay, so um, for earnings, that, uh, remind me I want to do something about earnings real quick. But let's look at NVIDIA. It's only got a 23, so I'm telling you we're not going to be able to get very far away for that one. Uh, so let's skip that. I'll go to a couple if we can't find one. What about Yelp? Uh, Yelp's 23 also. Um, so CMG. And it is a little bit easier to do this with the higher price uh, stocks uh, to get those the higher price stocks to get this to work out really nicely because you can get further away. So um, it's at the very low end of its uh, IV percent. So we definitely don't want to do that because the probabilities of volatility expanding on us are much greater. Okay. Um, but having said that, with the uh, trade, we can look at um, – Let's look at a couple that are going to have earnings just because I think it makes it a little bit easier if we, I mean, with the window out, I always line them up right here. And as you can see, anything above 50 IV percent is pretty slim pickings. And like uh, this has kind of wide markets for the most part, Altera, but uh, it's seven cents wide that's right in line we talked about it seven cents wide so let's look at it it's got a high implied volatility so they have earnings coming up make sure just had earnings so it should work out so if we did this as a slightly bullish trade uh, let's hope that this works out so it's trading right around here so uh, we are going to want to um, this isn't going to work out uh, it's not going to work out. And then we skip the strike by that. So we've got $2.50, $5, and we're paying a debit. That's just terrible. So that one wouldn't work either. So it's got the implied volatility percent, but I'm not going to pay that debit for it. Uh, which keys do you press to make the trade with uh, one call, two calls? Uh, I remember that. It is the control key, yes. So that I always build it out that way. I never click on this up here. Any strategy at all, I am, uh, as a matter of fact, when I hold down the control, you can see all of these buttons light up. I don't, but so uh, for that, um, we'd be buying one of these, selling two of those, and then skipping this strike to buy that one we're paying a debit so it doesn't really work out uh, one thing to do is just we're gonna have to that's why I did the BBBI I or uh, sorry the best buy example was I know that they have earnings in there and I wouldn't want to necessarily do this uh, on a long term for earnings a lot of people are asking about the um, earnings trades in that if there is an earnings trade, say for instance, Macy's, uh, and we had an earnings coming out, they have high implied volatility, uh, and they have their earnings coming out, I would put this right in line with the expected market maker move, which uh, it's not being given here, but um, if we found one that had the market maker move, I also show you how to figure out the market maker move, which is basically 80% of the straddle. So you can take this and that's uh, $3.50 times basically 80%. So the market maker move is 80% of that $3.50 uh, times 0 0.8. Uh, so $2.80 is what the market's expecting for um, Mylan. So in that, I would look to have my uh, short strike at that two dollar and fifty cent move so it'd be somewhere around here so I'd look to try and sell that one twice buy that one skip a strike uh, the two right there 
and hopefully get a credit, but we're not going to. So $2.50 wide there, $5 wide there. I need to get a credit for that. Uh, if you can get that to work out where this strike that you're short is right at the market maker move, that's how I would um, set up the broken wing butterfly for a earnings event. Does that make sense? But you have to be able to get a credit. Otherwise, it's not worth it. Uh, in the rut example, we had a maximum loss of 690. Um, did I say something different on that? Uh, let's look at the rut again. Uh, yeah, so you have a maximum profit of 310, so you'd get out at 155, yeah, so 50% of the max profit. Yes. Tiva has earnings on Monday, so you want to look at an earnings trade with this? Sorry. And then I'll try and find a good example of a real-world example. I don't know why they're not giving me the um, market maker move on these. Market maker move on these today, but um, we could look at it for the earnings. So uh, looks pretty good. So let's look at the straddle. So the straddle is uh, right around, let's just say 110 for math and 90. So two dollars and 80 percent of that is a dollar 60. So dollar uh, 60 is what the market's expecting to the upside. Um, so add a dollar 60 into this. So that's about. Three, uh, so 34, I want to be safe. So I'd probably do something like uh, sell two of these of the 34 strikes because that's right around they're predicting the market maker move. Hit it twice. Uh, it's only 50 cent wide, so I'd buy that one. And then since I went a dollar, uh, sorry, I went to do the 33s. So I want to be a dollar wide there and two dollars to the upside, which is going to be my, uh, rather than doing that, I'm going to just switch it to the 36s. Right, so I've got a dollar wide here. I've skipped the strike, sold that embedded call spread there. Um, and we're doing it as a debit. So if, to me, I mean, I would maybe if I really wanted to do this trade for the earnings, I would put it in there at uh, sorry uh, zero, maybe even a penny. Probably not going to get hit. The uh, the bid ask in here is pretty wide, and that probably wouldn't fit my rule for the most part because I'd like it to be ten cents wide. I guess it is kind of in, uh, some of them. It's pretty close, but started out at a slight credit, but don't go below. Uh, to the negative. All right, so um, what was my other one? So I know Alta has earnings, but uh, it's a it sets up as a pretty good example. So we can pretend that Alta. Can we all pretend that Alta doesn't have earnings just for sake of argument? It's got fifty percent. IV, so that fits that rule. Alta usually has uh, pretty close to 30 cent wides, which is pretty normal, but there's usually a lot of volume and open interest in here. So in that, for we'd be right there at the 70 strike. We could do this where, um, where we want to uh, buy the 70s, then sell, let's try and sell the 80s twice and then skip over to go to the 300s and we can get a credit for that. So that is a pretty wide broken wing butterfly and we're still collecting a credit. So we have a lot of room to the upside on this before we start reaching our max loss on it. And I got to get rid of that one. So we have a lot of room to the upside before we get to that 80 strike and then no risk to the downside. So this market can kind of creep up 
and we're pretty good. We've got 10 ticks to the upside, and uh, that works out pretty good. The other thing you can do is also set this up with a trade where we go just slightly in. So maybe we thought it was going to be closer to uh, uh, where we are now because it's kind of topped out up here. It's kind of gone sideways, and if there wasn't earnings, it would be perfect for that. It looks like it's kind of breaking down a little bit. Can't get above the value area high. So um, we'd want to buy the, uh, sorry, we don't want to buy, yeah, buy the 65, sell the 270s. Probably even go wider, and then skip it out to the 80. We're getting a dollar fifty credit. Could probably go a little wider so let's look at the 60s and um, so that's the perfect butterfly so we want to go to the 90s then All right so we're still collecting a dollar credit which is a nice credit All right so it's ten dollars the downside twenty dollars to the upside if we even look at the chart like you know uh, above basically 280 is where our break even is on that because it's remember that skip strike plus the credit so it's you know 281 and then uh, we can look at it on the analyze tab get rid of the old one and you can see to the downside we have nothing but profit potential we get to keep that credit on the way down we did increase our risk to the upside, but in that, our break-even is going to be right there at the uh, 279, right, 279 something. No, that's not right. Two, God, I'm brain dead. Two, uh, we collected a dollar, so two, we skipped the strike, 281 to the upside. Sorry, guys. Uh, can you go over the market maker move again? Yeah, so the market maker move, usually, you know, they give it to you. I don't know why it's not giving it to me now. But basically, the market maker move is the straddle times 0.8. And where does 0.8 come from? I don't know. That's just one of those things on the floor where people would be like, um, the predictive value is the, market, uh, is the straddle times 0.8. Why? Well, just because. So it's kind of a rule of thumb. And when they have it up here, sometimes that will, most of the time they will give you what the market maker move is predicting um, up here in like yellow. And it's usually pretty close to that. There's is a guesstimation. This is a guesstimation. It just has to do with the amount of volatility kind of pumped into those premiums. Take your straddle or you make it uh, is the high enough to take a credit when you add the longs, right? Yes, so well, you take that straddle, multiply it by 0.8, whatever that number is, add that in to where it's trading, and that's where, you know, add it in or subtract it to the downside. That's the range the market's predicting that the uh, earnings could move. Now, is that always on? No, I mean, we've seen them double the market make a move in some instances but that's what the market's kind of predicting that move to be based on volatility so with that um, I would add that for this strata, uh, strategy add that market maker move into where it's trading and then that's where I would pick my uh, short strike to be that makes sense Uh, the 2167 is the, the yes. So uh, Mark is saying, isn't this the market maker move? In a sense, it is. It's not necessarily for earnings because I'm sure Alta is going to move more than uh, you know four probably more than four dollars for their earnings. I don't know exactly when their earnings come in. This is the expected market maker move. Yes, for uh, the time of now until. March, but as you can see, we should be able to tell uh, when their earnings come in. Their earnings should be coming in 
I guess in the next 28 days or something. Let's, let me just double check. Looks like their earnings are going to land right here on this particular one. So the market maker move, the way to figure out that market maker move for like the next day, Mark, this, this is ex the market maker move from now until then. But to figure out what it is just for that earnings event, take the straddle times 0.8. Does that make sense for everybody? So Mark, you are correct. This is the expected market maker move for Alta in the next uh, 28 days or here for the next 35 days. But I'm just speaking specifically for that night of uh, um, the night going from like the afternoon, you know, if they came out after the close, that overnight is what they're expecting just for that binary event. Does that make sense? So, right. So see how the volatility expanded right here? That's why I was saying they must have it landing right here because these expire on the 10th and uh, Alta's earnings are on the 9th. So you can see where the most volatility is, is where the earnings event is. So it'll actually be in this one a little bit too. So, um, but this isn't expect what the expected market maker move is for that particular binary event necessarily. It's all the way up until then. Does that make sense for everybody? My math was just for that one night for the binary event. And they usually give it to you up here in yellow. This is just for the event, right? Yeah, just for the earnings event was what that, that market make move that I was speaking of specifically. Okay. And this right out here is from now, the, it's expecting from now until then, uh, price line as an, a possibility of moving up or down 107 points. It's usually when you get inside of a few days that they'll start looking up here and you'll start seeing that uh, things show up. Does that make sense? Hope I didn't lose anybody on that. So the ultimate thing is, and you can use this with your charts. Like if you guys like to use charts, uh, you know, I usually use like the um, uh, market profile here. You know, if I saw something like coming up against resistance or it came back down here and thought it was going to come to this particular mark, maybe that's where I'm going to be doing my, uh, my short, uh, strikes. So you can kind of pick your Fibonacci levels or whatever and figure out where you think it might migrate, where your odds are if you play it that way, where it might go to and then use that for your uh, strike location as well. But for the most part, I like to pick just out of the money uh, strikes to start building mine out. That way, if it goes down, I uh, make profit. If it moves up a little bit, I can still make profit. How do you read the monkey bars? Well, the idea here is when the market gets overextended to the upside, it, you know, there's a lot of pressure on it. People are, you know, start covering their longs and things of that nature. This is where the most time and volume has been spent. So that's where the market in the last year has found value for price line. So anytime it gets too far away from there, it's like a magnet. It's like pulling it back down. And it really becomes a sharper magnet if you've kind of traded out of, out of bounds and then the market comes back in, down in. As soon as you trade back down below this after being above, it's going to want to go down there. So that's 
it's basically the psychology of the market. Psychology of the market is saying the value of price line or the market's predicting the value of price line to be here. And these, yeah, these are in a sense standard deviation. I don't know if that's actually a standard deviation move necessarily, but it's just where, uh, yeah, actually I think it might be like where 80% of the volume is. I've kind of forgotten that whole thing, but this is where the bulk of the volume has been traded. And once you get outside of here, it, it just really loses steam, especially when it gets real thin, then you can tell that there's just not participation in it. All right. Okay, guys, we're going to be doing the um, options premium membership trial. It's one month for $7. You get basically uh, Wolfman's daily market commentary videos with options trade analysis. Uh, you also get over 50 videos of the uh, top options trading workshop archives. There's a lot in there, you guys, just about every single uh, strategy, uh, especially the ones that I use. I go through all of my rules just like I did with this. When you need to do high implied volatility, when to use, uh, you know, debit spreads, things of that nature, iron condors, iron butterflies, the condors, uh, call spreads, everything. So um, you also get priority access to the online trading workshops, which is what these are. And, uh, the trading courses. So you guys should really take advantage of this for $7. You guys probably spent more than that on lunch today or even uh, a couple of uh, uh, trades that you put on today. You probably spent that just on doing it. And if I can save you $7, which I probably did on this one webinar alone, you know, it's well worth it, right? I mean, everybody else is just telling you how to set it up by skipping that strike. They're not telling you why you're skipping that strike. They're not telling you what your risk is up to the upside for doing that and how to benefit from the downside. They wouldn't even tell you necessarily that if you do it for a debit on the down or do this strategy for a debit, you're setting yourself up for a complete loss. It's not worth it. The risk reward isn't there. So, if, you know, you learned anything from this particular webinar alone, uh, you know, for $7, you, you can't beat it. And uh, this course, all of these classes are designed to produce consistent winners, increase probabilities. I mean, I go through all the probabilities, just like I showed you how to figure out the probability of the, the long uh, call butterfly, you know. Just those little things will increase your success rate, knowing what the market maker move is for a binary event, you know, whether it's, um, you know, uh, somebody talking on TV, uh, FOMC, you know, that they're not always going to show what that move is. And, you know, I mean, I just saved you a ton of time and headache knowing exactly what the market maker move is on a binary event. I mean, that's worth its weight in gold. So uh, this could pay for itself many times over, especially for the low rate. Um, and uh, you guys should really, really consider taking advantage of this, especially at that price. Thanks, John. Got to go. Appreciate you sticking around. Thank you. All right. Great. Purchase some videos. Thank you. Um, so really, guys, take advantage of it. I mean, you can't beat it. Seven dollars. It's one lunch. Um, but great stuff in there. Plus, I have the other videos in there that are like short kind of refresher courses so that you kind of get caught up on it. All right. So this link is in the chat box for this window. You can also pause the video later, write it down. But the fastest way to do it is click on the chat window. We're talking with the questions box, but over there in the chat window, there is a link to this offer. Just click on that. That's as easy as it gets, and it'll pull you up onto this page, and you can take advantage of that. So uh, pretty easy peasy. It's also right here. You can't really click on this. It's not uh, active, but you can write it down. It's pretty easy. Eric the Wolfman Wilkinson Option Education Service 7 
special, right? Later webinars, I'm going to be drilling on different options, components, how to trade them, where I find them, when I find them appropriate. I want to thank you guys all for watching. If you have any questions, contact us at 310-598-6677, or you can email us at trading at protraderstrategies.com. All right, thank you guys very much. Appreciate you guys sticking around on a Friday, and uh, hope you guys can take advantage of this deal. All right, if you can't take that, take it easy. Thank you, JQ. All the best to you, too. Check it off. Time for a cold one. <laughs> Thanks, Gordon. I appreciate it.